Spring is the season of shedding our winter coats and starting new, so I want to share with you how I am freshening up my home for spring by making use of what I already have in some very simple spring homemaking. I should underscore that I am not a home designer, I struggle with home decor decision paralysis, and I live in a normal cookie cutter home in the suburbs. Practicality is, of course, subjective, but I hope these tips land on a down-to-earth level that can inspire you no matter who you are, where you live, or what you do. As my family is evolving, I have been inspired to rethink the aesthetics of my home. I bought this new ruggable to add some color into our living area, but outside of that, I don't really want to spend more money to decorate because I'm really fickle and I'm determined to reduce the clutter, not add more stuff into my home. One of my favorite ways to decorate is with fresh flowers, and I found the cheapest way to do that is to plant native perennials in your garden. Or if you don't have a garden, even just a perennial in a pot on the porch will work. Native plants tend to be low maintenance, and since they are perennial, they will come back year after year. This is a dried flower arrangement I made with flowers from last year's garden, and I'm just swapping out the containers. And one little hack I have is to place something like a jar inside of your large vase or container to take up space. So that way, if you don't have a lot of flowers or if you're buying fresh flowers, you don't have to buy as many because that container, in this case a jar, takes up that extra space. And it also makes it easier to put short flowers in a big container. I think there are a lot of aesthetic rules or suggestions about making flower arrangements, but honestly, I just do whatever I want. So I love the long stems, especially because I didn't have the long stems last year. So I'm putting them around the edges on the outside of that jar that I put in the vase. And then all the short flowers I'm putting in the middle to make it look fuller and to make those short flowers look taller. I mix up the colors and the textures and the length of the flowers, and I make an arrangement that really represents my garden. One of the things that I'm doing here to freshen up for spring, that's not really decor related, but I am cleaning up some areas that honestly, I almost never think about. Swapping out the shower curtain liner, wiping down the top of the windowsill in the bathroom, and washing the curtains. I have to be honest with you, I don't think I've ever washed the curtains in my life. It's really easy to stick to your daily cleaning routine, but for me, I never feel excited about that at the end of the day because I'm just really used to it. But when I take a little time to clean and tidy up the areas that often go ignored, I feel really good about it. And it costs me next to nothing other than what it costs to use laundry detergent and the $10 for the new shower curtain liner. Our walls have been barren for a long time. It's kind of a long story, but we moved in in 2020, so we never really got around to decorating. So I am trying to decorate our bedroom, but I want to use things I already have. And I have these pieces of art that have been sitting in my hall closet, I think for at least a year, at least one of them for a year. I think the other one I got like four or five months ago, but I want to get them on the wall because if they're not on the wall and they're sitting in the closet, it is just nothing but clutter and wasted money. I don't know if this is the gallery wall of my dreams, but I think one trick to this is when you use what you have and you use it to hold a place, when you find something that will work there, you can really easily envision it. So I did put two small frames that I have of dried flowers from last year's garden up there. I don't know if they'll stay there forever, but at least I can start visualizing what I might actually want there. One of the biggest changes in our home right now is our three-year-old has moved from her crib into a big girl bed. So I want to redo her room and make it less of a baby's room and more of a kid's room. So I have this big box of art that she has made at school. So we went through it together and picked out a few things to put in some frames. And these are frames that I had just sitting around the closet, so I didn't have to buy them. So originally I was going to take the baby art off the walls, but she said she still wanted it on there. These are spice racks that I was originally using to hold baby books for her, but I took the books out and I'm putting her art and a few pieces of memorabilia in there for her. But what I like about this is it adds some color, but it also gives her an opportunity to see her artwork on display and have a lot of pride with the work that she's done. 
Now, if we're talking cheap and easy for spring decor, plant propagation is it. So these are plants that I've had. One of these plants I've actually had for almost 20 years, but the rest of them are kind of new. I got them for like four or five bucks at Walmart recently. And so I'm just taking trimmings of these. If you want to propagate your plants, just look up the plant on Google. It'll tell you how to propagate it. Sometimes you can trim them. Sometimes you have to divide the roots, but you can get yourself double, triple, even quadruple the number of plants in your house that you can use for decor for free. I put them in little vases and one's even in a champagne flute and they're on the window in my bathroom to add some color and they'll get a lot of good light there. This is one of the biggest problem spots in my house, the foyer. So I actually took the bench from our bedroom and put it downstairs just to hold the place so I can visualize a little bit of what it would look like to have something there. But what I really need is a bigger piece of furniture so I can take those hooks down. So I don't know what that is yet, but I took some measurements and put them in my phone. So that way when I find the right thing, I know if it'll fit or not. And that's a tip I hear all the time on like decor podcasts and YouTube videos is that if you don't know what to do with this space, put something that you have there so you can start visualizing. At bare minimum, at least you'll know what you don't like there. And that is an experiment that will cost you nothing. Trust me, when you buy furniture that you're not sure you're going to like, it's a huge pain to return it. Ask me how I know. <laughs> For me, feeling spring in my home isn't just about the things in it, it's also the things that I use. So just a few clips ago, you probably saw me cooking up some green food and that was actually garlic scapes from my garlic that I've been growing in my garden. They're actually the flowers that sprout out of the garlic and you can trim them and eat them and they're really good with some butter and salt and pepper. What I'm doing here is I am freeze drying herbs from my garden and I know that it is not practical for a lot of people to freeze dry herbs if you don't have a freeze dryer and that is a large expense but if you don't have a freeze dryer you can totally dehydrate, air dry, oven dry your herbs and use them later but one of my main goals for what I like to call my suburban homestead is to freeze dry my own food and herbs from my garden. So that is what I'm doing here but what I like about this is that it brings in these spring feelings and the, the things that we like about spring green and freshness and herbs and lightness but it's also really practical even if you spend money on buying a couple herb plants the amount of money that you spend growing or buying that herb is way cheaper than it would cost to buy a little pack of herbs at the store and then every time I open my pantry, I have these beautiful herbs that came from my garden and it might not necessarily be decor, but it still harbors an aesthetic that I really love in a home. Sometimes I watch YouTube videos or look at Pinterest and see decor and home tips that are, yes, very beautiful and inspiring, but they aren't practical for my home, my lifestyle, or my budget. But what I am coming to realize as I age and build a home for my family family is that some of the most beautiful things in my life are not out of reach. They are in fact right here already in my home.